people. This is not live, of course. I'm gonna go live on Friday still. So I should be able to get this out before Friday. So I guess you can see you got you a little bit extra. And then right now I'm at episode eight. I thought I was at the pinnacle episode nine, but in actuality it's only at eight. I guess I can't really count. So check this out. One of the things that I like to do is when I get up in the morning, I start my day off, you know, you gotta do your personal hygiene, of course. You always do your personal hygiene. Get cleaned up, maybe shave up, clean the skull up a little bit. But then I gotta watch the freaking news. Okay, I gotta watch the news. Why? Because traffic sucks in San Antonio. So I gotta watch the news just to to see how traffic is. <laughs> it's the funny thing. I work from home. No traffic. But it just became a habit. Now, the second thing that I do now do for me is I have to watch sports in the morning. Now I pretty much gone went about almost a year without ESPN. Um, I was kinda like strong on to get ESPN back because I'd cut the cord. I was you might as well say I was done because I was tired of the poor performance in my cable or direct TV, however we'll call it. And I got rid of it. So yeah, it was gone. But but here's the deal. <sighs> anyway, I got back in the habit of watching sports. Now <laughs> I've always said in my recent I don't want to say recent in my generalization about a majority of professional athletes, man, the buttholes. And I'm just putting it politely. The old Brian will say exactly what you think, but I think the buttholes. Uh, I think I said in one of my podcasts that I have somewhat met LeBron James and his buddy, the Wayne Wade, and Carmelo Anthony. And man, they were mushroom heads, man. They were freaking. And if you know what a mushroom head is, I really don't need to really go into too much detail for it. Yeah, mushroom heads. And I'm like, so, so for me, I don't know you. And then of course, uh, LeBron James actions subsequently just made everything worse to show what type of person he is. Now, I guess he's changed. I got hot, but check this out. And what actually brought me to this, and you probably said, Brian, get to the point, get to the point, get to the point. Well, this is my show. I'll get to the point where I'm ready. Don't click, don't stop. I promise we'll get to the point. <laughs> So basically, this is what, all right. So last week they were talking about, you know, Dak Prescott wanting more money. And, you know, some of the sports analysts said that legitimately that he should get paid a little bit more because he actually made the Cowboys relevant in the last three years, you know, post Tony Romo. And that he's actually got them more screen time, more TV time, because they're like, I don't care if you call yourself uh, guys team or America's team or whatever hey you suck we're not putting you on TV and then I guess you know Green Bay came out saying they were America's team no no Cowboys now that was last week they said pay him what he's worth then <laughs> then this week you have Zeke Elliott now he is potentially holding out because he wants more money. Now, I've always said this about Americans and maybe in fanatics in general, you have displaced loyalty. I'm gonna show you why you have displaced loyalty, okay? So I'm gonna read this real quick. Athletes like LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard take time off during the season to ensure their bodies can perform well during the playoffs. This is what they call load management. Um, load management. You only play basketball. Now, I'm not saying the rigorous jumping, the running, the practices. I'm not saying it doesn't take some toll on the body, but you signed that line and said, hey, I'm going to play ball. Now, in a lot of cases, when you're the superstar, you can call your shots. Theoretically, you're a commodity, but more than likely, 
you're still holding you know, cards to your own to your own future, so to speak. But um, 82 games, that's a lot of games. I got it. That's, that's definitely more than football. I cannot see players surviving 82 games of football. Maybe a whole lot of CTE, you know what I'm saying? You know, the, the, there'll be a lot of concussions. And and here's the thing. This is only basketball. Be talking about you, you, you're going to do some low imaginal football. You'll find yourself replaced. The likelihood of you getting replaced for some up and coming, you know, a becomer, pretty high. So, you know, you don't see that. Just basketball. So what is load management actually? Load management is defined as the deliberate temporary reduction of external physiological stressors intended to facilitate global improvements in the athlete's wellness and performance while preserving the muscular and meta metabolic health. Basically, you reduce the amount of training and competition on the athlete's body. Like I said, you wanna be ready for the playoffs. If you make the playoffs. LeBron James did not make the playoffs. Now, he has some load management going on. And he has some injuries and whatnot. But check this out. I can see myself right now. Here it is. It's like 4.30 in the morning. I'm still back in the military, back when I was a stud. Okay. And I call my first time. I'm saying, hey, uh, Top. Because that's what we call him, Top. Hey, Top. I'm going to uh, do a little bit of this load management thing. I'm not going to run today. I realize we probably got like a two or three mile run. But... I've done my calculation. At this rate, I'm gonna probably do about 50 miles this month and I gotta save the knees. So uh, I'm gonna see you at nine o'clock formation, okay? First work off formation, I'll be there. And I'll probably show up and then they'll be ripping the stripes off my collar because that's probably how fast they would process that Article 15. Article 15 is basically non-judicial punishment and they reduce your rank. Now, at the time I was getting out, they couldn't just do that. It was pretty rough to knock an E7 down to, E6, you have to do something really stupid. But anyway, but I, I, I can see that going well. Or, you know, maybe I'm working a, a job, customer service or whatever. I'm like, hey, Bob. Yeah, uh, this is Brian. Um, been feeling a little bit of carpal tunnel and wrist lately. Um, yeah, I gotta take a little bit of time off. I'm gonna come in about 12. But I do expect you to pay me my full eight hours you know, it's load management. In that situation, you'd be fired. <laughs> you'd probably be fired. Yeah, move you out and replace you. So to me, it's bull crap. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, my brother, my brother told me, he said, Brian, I love your podcast. Your podcast is pretty good. But you, you speak a lot about your own opinion. You're pretty opinionated. Not, not saying that you're not substantiated in the things that you say, but you're not basing it on anything. All right, check this out. U.S. household income, according to the census ACS survey, the median household income for the United States was 60,336 in 2017. It's, it's generally been going up about $5,000 every year. So you can add another 10,000 to 2019. Uh, the latest data available 2018 census ACS data, including 2018 national household income numbers will be released in September, 2019. So it hasn't been released yet. So we're still looking at about 60,336 now. I'm, I'm a diligent dude. So that's that's not one household, or excuse me, that's not one person in the household. That's combined incomes. That's husband, wife, right? Husband, husband, wife, wife. Hey, you want to call it? Breaking it down to $30,168 per person, which is $2,514 a month per person, as an average of $628.50 a week, which breaks down about $1571. So you're saying that the average American is making about $1571. Now, have you ever paid for really good tickets? I haven't. I always get my tickets for free because I'm not paying that much. I didn't even pay for the nosebleed tickets I got where everybody was like, this big. Yeah, that's, that's what I saw. But, but fanatic didn't look at the screen. I can look at the screen at home, just saying. But the point I'm getting at is, you think the average American only making the, the average American income for the home is only $60,336. And they pay in a lot of money just to see certain players, but that player decides, hey, doing load management this night, man, I'm, being, I'm feeling ripped. I'm feeling ripped. And I'm gonna tell you why I'm feeling ripped. I'm feeling ripped because 
these dirt diggers are, are disloyal. They're not loyal to you. They don't care about you. Fans drive the market. That's what they say. Fans drive the market because if there's no fans, then guess what? There's no market. If fans aren't going to the games, if fans aren't buying the jerseys, guess what? Somebody's losing money. But oh, not quote unquote superstars because they're getting paid no matter what. It's called a guaranteed contract. So it doesn't matter if you're upset. Now, let's take this a little bit further. Kawhi Leonard was a spur, got sent to Raptors. He was doing load management. For him, it worked out. Guess what? He got another title. Championship team. He gave this dude the key to the city. Followed him in a helicopter as he went to go talk to the owners about him staying in Toronto. He's a clipper now. Because you know why? Kawhi's not loyal. He's not loyal. He's loyal to one person and one person only himself. It came to the point. It came to the point that he made it very clear. He didn't sign a five-year contract with the Clippers. He left that out there after three years. An option. He used to bounce. So saying, I may not be here for five years. I got to go where the money is. So fans, I love you. Thank you for supporting it, but mm, you're irrelevant. So here's my thing. Now I got tons of jerseys, whole bunch of them. And I can say right now, there's only one Jersey that I, I didn't pay for it. My wife paid for it, that she paid full cost. And she bought it when she was at Texas stadium. You know, she, she bought it. She bought it there. I still call it Texas Stadium. I don't care if it's AT&T. I call it Texas Stadium. But here's the point. She paid that hundreds of my dollars for that jersey. Most of my jersey, I get it Ross. Get it like knocked down to like 15 bucks. Because Joker, you ain't getting my money. I am not paying for you. Now, I know I sound like the get off my get out my yard, old man. Get off my porch, old man. I'm not saying that. What I'm trying to, this, this is what I call wake up. It's not a rant. It might sound like a rant, but it's not a rant. This is wake up. Wake up, fanatics. Don't you understand? You're paying $150, $160 for jerseys. You're paying $150, $160 for shoes. I got some King James, LeBron James shoes. I got some Steph Curry shoes. Man, I even got, what's that the joker's name? Um, Raven Chaser, I can't think of his name. Kevin Durant, that's him. I got him his shoes. Bought them all at Ross. 34 bucks a piece. <laughs> Booyah. Because you know what? I bought on a budget. And I'm not paying that exorbitant amount of money. Now, question was brought up. Here's a question. Who runs the NBA? Do the players run the NBA? Do, does the commissioner run the NBA? I would say shoe sales. Well, the shoe companies run the NBA because it came down that LeBron James was going to let Anthony Davis wear number 23. Nike say, uh-uh, not happening. No, 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 my friend. You're not doing that. Not Do you understand what the financial ramifications will be just to switch jerseys? No, not happening. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Not happening. So, which I think it was a phenomenally stupid thing because Americans, not Americans, people, people are pretty gullible. People, we are very, very gullible. Very, very good. When we think that you're thinking about us, oh man, we're all in. We're gonna buy in, we're gonna buy in. Check this out. So, Yahoo Sports, Chris B. Haynes reported Friday that the switch put off a year because Nike said the uniform manufacturers did not grant permission, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Lakers and James needed to get approval, which was like 15 days past the deadline, he said no. But due to the production issues and the massive financial hit Nike would have absorbed from the number 23 James inventory, they already been produced. They will be like, no, they can't do it. But I got the plan. See, I'm gonna show you Nike how you could have, how you really could have like capitalized on this, right? So, this is what I'm saying. First, you reduce the price of the new of the old jersey 23 LeBron James, so you reduce that price. 
That's the first thing you do. Now, you're gonna create a buzz around LeBron James' new jersey, the new number he's gonna wear. And then you're gonna go ahead and give the 23 to Davis on the back, Anthony Davis. And you're gonna create a buzz. And you're gonna jack the prices up on these two new jerseys. Hey, you wanna get the first run of AD wearing 23 for the Lakers? It's gonna cost X amount of dollars, okay? So you're capitalizing on the gullibility of the fanatic, the fan, the guy who wants to wear the jersey while he's representing the team. That's all you gotta do. Because let's 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 be realistic. You're not paying $150, $200 per jersey. No, 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 my brother, no. According to Core, Nike products are manufactured all over the world. So we already know what's happening now. The exact data states that uh 554 Nike manufacturing companies, 42 countries around the world, with a total of 1,017,345 workers who ain't making that much money, to include places like Vietnam, China, um, Sarai, Lanka, Sarai, Lanka, Japan, Brazil, Indonesia. I didn't say the United States, man. Okay, this is gonna be jacked up. We, we, we have to have benefits. And so what we're looking at theoretically, well, I don't say theoretically, I'm gonna say these are numbers that I did see. So I didn't make these numbers up. Now the figures are based on the on the average cost per whatever they're making. And we're talking about shoes right now. So according to the chart, uh, it costs Nike an average of $28.50 to make a sneaker that will real retail for $100. The sneaker will be sold to the wholesalers at $50, comes to $4.50 after SG and A in taxes. Okay, so Nike will turn around and get twenty one fifty as a profit. Okay, now this cut for Nike will, of course, increase the indirect, direct customer challenge retails. However, how it goes out. Okay, so they're still going to make a profit regardless. So you're telling me that you couldn't do a little flip flop to no negative. You just you know flexing your muscle. That's what you do. You just flexing your muscle. So, nah. Now TSN interviewed. Uh, current and former executives with Reebok and other sports apparel companies and came up with these estimates. Reebok pays about $15 to produce the jersey, including materials, labor, wages, and other expenses. Reebok parent company means I own them too. Adidas says it works with more than 1,200 independent factories in 65 countries, including Indonesia, China, and Vietnam. The production costs for these jerseys in Canada or the United States can be higher than those overseas and because, you know, we got to have our benefits, okay? They don't care about them jokers over there. Lose one, replace one. Lose one, replace one. That's how they do it. Now, the NFL, the NHL, which is not really popular in the United States, but very popular in Canada. Now, their jerseys were retailing about $330. Okay, so Reebok sells those jerseys to the wholesalers at $150. Okay, so they're selling them for $330. You see what I'm saying? The profit is... Um, sound like somebody's getting over majorly and like i said i don't want to sound like a rant because it isn't i'm just telling you right now open your eyes because football players basketball players hockey baseball whatever these, these people they're not loyal to you they're loyal to one thing and one thing oh oh my dollar the steal from them brother yeah i can't sing but it's the point i'm getting at they only do it for the dollar. And the, here, here's the thing. They're mega rich anyway. They're rich anyway. I'm like, seriously? But that's, hey, just like Nino Brown says, <laughs> it's the American way. But I'll be honest with you. I'm not paying big or top dollar for, uh, for the Nikes. I'm going to Ross. That's where I'm going. There might be some kind of flaw on it. I don't see it. I don't care. I'm getting my my nice shoes on a discount. Period. You want to come and cheat? Come and cheat. I don't care. My car's paid off. Yeah. And I'm cheap. But the point I'm getting at is they can't afford it if they want to. They just choose not to. Now, going back to the whole point I was saying earlier. I haven't bought a Madden game in probably three, two or three cycles. And I'm going to tell you why, because I have EA access. Now I'm paying a monthly subscription for the EA access, but every so often Madden comes down the pipe for free. Technically if I'm paying in it, but if I would actually break down what I'm paying for that game in lieu of the games that I have 
bought or downloaded for free technically because the average game cost is $59.95, close to $65 plus tax, but I'm only paying like 40 bucks or something like that for subscription. So that's not even the full price of one. So man comes, I got it. NBA Live comes, I got it. So you'll see me play those games, but I'm not paying full price. I'm, not, I'm making sure that the players aren't benefiting from me and <laughs> nobody. Now, yeah, EA, EA, they're gonna benefit a little bit because they got to, they're going to. But I'm just, I'm just saying, it, it, it is what it is. I, I, I can't, I just, I was in the army, okay? I was in the army. Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity. That's, that's, that's the army. Okay, that's leadership, but that's the army. Marines, simple fidelis, always faithful. Okay, pro players, pay me or I'm not playing. That's just the way it is. Chris Brown said it the best. Them hoes ain't loyal. Nah, they ain't loyal. I'm telling you. I need to wake up. I might sound like that old dude. Get out my yard. Get off my porch. I might sound like that guy. But I'm I'm speak I'm dropping some knowledge for y'all. You better listen up, save you some dollars. Because right now, if I go to Stantinkos, right, and I do call it Stantinkos, because I know it's not Stantinkos, it's Santinkos, just let you know I can't say it, but I call it Stantinkos. And I'm I'm gonna drop about 40, 50 bucks. Just go see a freaking movie. That, that, inflation, baby. Inflation. I'd rather go see like the X-Men or, you know, Wolverine or something that I want to see that I know that will sit back, eat one of their expensive hamburgers. <laughs> Believe me, it's good. And I'm going to watch the movie. I will go ahead and absorb that cost where I choose to spend my money. But that's, we already know the movie industry is going to sky high. But we accept that, okay? We we know the movie stars are they're, they gotta get paid. That's our entertainment, but not these fickle players. Because you know what? You're not gonna have an actor walk off a set. They'll sue him or her. Oh, we gonna get them money because that's ruthless. But these players, man, they ain't loyal. They don't care. I'm just saying they don't. Uh, you put that right. You being too hard. I haven't really watched football or basketball and not because of Colin Kaepernick either. Simply because why these jokers aren't loyal. And my last, if you want to call it a rant, then my last piece of this, I love cage fighting. I love it. I love to watch it. Bill Toto watched in mine. Now their stuff is like pay-per-view. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I love Bill Toto fights aren't generally that great. There's some good guys there, but they're generally not that good. Production is far below UFC. But I quit watching UFC as well, because, you know, every so often I would buy a pay-per-view, especially if it was a big name. But now, in order to see just regular fights, I gotta watch ESPN Plus, which, oh, by the way, is subscription. You went from Spike to Paramount or whatever to FS1, and now you're ESPN, then ESPN Plus. So we got, I gotta pay this to see some Rudy Poo fight? No, I watch the prelims and then go on by my business. That's it, I'm not doing it. It's just not happening, G. No, mm -mm. So yeah, we went from bare knuckles to no rules to illegal underground style fighting to big money, big money. I'm. And, and I know, like I said, I'm sounding like that guy. He said, well, if you were in a position where you were making the money that you would also be like in full demand, man, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. You know, I'm that type of person is, once I get my money, I wanna keep my money. That's what I wanna do, I wanna keep my money. I don't wanna spend it and send it away so I can be back in the situation I was before, broke. You know what I'm saying? You get all these, these players, I'm not saying that you get some dumb ones like, uh, Lamar Odom, I don't even know if he got money or not, but he's dumb. You know, he was married to a Kardashian, one of the richest families in the United States, you know. But no, he wanted to go up to some old prostitute and get high and die. They brought him back, but that don't make no kind of sense. That's dumb. But hey, now, you know, Chloe got her a basketball player who, who do the same thing, he, you know. 
he raw dogging other chicks and whatnot. I hate to be so explicit, but that's what he's doing. You know, even he had a kid with this woman, and and I'm not gonna lie, it, I haven't figured that one out yet. If I can figure that out, I'll let you know. But that's it. That's all I got to say about that. Let me check my notes, make sure I didn't miss anything. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So, um, like I said, I'm just throwing this out here. I am still doing my live cast Friday, eight o'clock. And the topic, I think it's, it's, it's a little nonsensical. Um, I'm trying to jump back to the nonsensical, but it's kind of serious. It's called the body, uh, excuse me, the bottle cap challenge, Area 51. And yo, was the moon landing fake? Inquiring minds want to know. But if you want to know what I'm thinking, based on some facts, minus some facts, some stated possible facts, I'll see you at 8 o'clock Friday. Until then, it's your guy, Brian Matthews, according to Psychologics on Facebook. And please, like, subscribe, comment, and share. And oh, by the way, if you haven't seen the video of the interview that I did with my stepson, Javon Tyre, you really should go back and look at it. Not because I want you to look at my video. It's because it's about a young man who's expressing that, hey, he's had some challenges that he's trying to work through. And this might be able to help some people if they run into the same situation, especially you have kids. But once again, until then, I will leave all the information down low, down low, <laughs> down below. And we're out of here.